Welcome back to The Insider, y'all. We're here in the conference room at the Ohio Valley Conference, fresh off of the NCAA tournament first and second rounds. And I don't know if you saw it, but Murray State Racers, the 13th seed, knocked off the 4th seed Vanderbilt in San Jose last Thursday. And I'll tell you what, one shining moment, totally awesome. It, that's something that they're going to be replaying for years and years to come. So congratulations to them. Let's go ahead and jump right in with the you know, tournament edition. First of all, some stats. The win over Vanderbilt made it the second win in the NCAA tournament in as many years. Last year, Moorhead State won in the opening round game. That hasn't happened since 1988 and 1989. This was the first OVC first round win since Middle Tennessee State beat Florida State in 1989. And the win over Vanderbilt was the first over an SEC team since Tennessee Tech beat South Carolina in the 2000-2001 season. Also, if Murray State would have been able to pull out that win, it would have been the second, or it would have been the first time an OVC school had advanced to the Sweet 16 since 1971 when Western Kentucky made it, and they actually went to the Final Four that year, so pretty good squad. And let's see, one more stat here with the 31 wins, Murray has become the uh, OVC team with the most ever wins in a season, so. That's obviously pretty impressive. They got some, they're in some great company there, and they're at the top of the list, so congratulations to them. Now, briefly, I want to talk about the Butler game for a minute. If you didn't see it, it was a heartbreaking loss. They had their shot to win. They were lost by two, and they had the ball at the end of the game, and, and it, they turned it over, and uh, that was the story of the game. I don't, I don't know what the number was exactly, but I know they had somewhere between 18, 19 turnovers in that neighborhood, and you're not going to win too many games when you've got that many yeah. turnovers. So... Honestly, if you watch it, you could argue they may have been the better team that day. So, uh, you know, don't don't hang your heads. I mean, they, they got a lot to be proud of. That's a that's a hell of a season, and to be you know, you know have a few mistakes and turnovers and, and play poorly, and, and you're still two points away from the Sweet 16. That's that's uh, you did a great job, and you made the conference proud. So, thank you, and and uh, you know, good luck, you know, going forward. Obviously, let's uh, move on to some other schools though. Morehead State. They run the CBI along with Eastern Kentucky, and Moorhead State won its first round of the CBI. And that is the first time since 1988 that two OVC teams have won in the same postseason. So we're breaking all kinds of records this year here, folks. Uh, they won their first game against Colorado State. They beat them 74-60, and then they lost to Boston 89-80, or 89-91, excuse me. So heartbreaking loss there, too. And they obviously had a great season. They got a good crew coming back, so it should be another good year for you guys going forward as well. And lastly, Eastern Kentucky, they lost their first round game of the CBI to College of Charleston, 79-82. to So, all in all, great postseason on the men's side. Yeah. What about the women? Um, yeah, the, the women had three teams playing in the postseason. We'll start with um, Austin P, who played in the NCAA tournament, and they faced Tennessee on Saturday. They um, Tennessee got out to an you know early 15-point lead before Austin P scored their first basket. Tennessee got out to... Um, I think it was a 38-point lead in the second half, so Austin B couldn't really get into it, um, couldn't really, um, you know, close the lead up, but Ashley Herring, Herring did lead the team with 21 points, and um, Austin P was only the eighth team in tournament history to get into the tournament with losing record, and they did that by winning the OVC tournament, so, you know, the girls still have a lot to be proud of, they had a great season. So congratulations to them. Um, and moving on to other postseason action, Eastern Illinois played in the WNIT, and um, they did commit a season-high 30 turnovers, and their three core post players only scored for a combined two points, and so they ended up losing the first-round game 85-56. to 56. And But the girls did end their season with a 23-11 and 11 record, and they won 20 games for the second year in a row and they earned a national postseason berth for the first time since 1988. DeKenya Nixon led the Panther squad with 17 points. And heading over to Moorhead State, who played in the first ever Women's Basketball Invitational, the girls fell to College of Charleston 67-59, to and they hosted, first, they hosted that game. And um, they were playing in their first ever NCAA postseason game. And, you know, they... 
they did fall fall behind by double digits in the first half, but you know they played a great game. China Bozeman led the game with 22 points and 10 rebounds, and it was their second double double of the season. So they fought fought hard, but you know they did fall. But still, it was good that they made the postseason for the first time. So yeah, I think overall, you know, we had a good showing. Um, it's good that we had three teams in the tournament. So yeah, it was good for women's basketball overall. Six OVC schools in postseason play this year, which is a record. So the conference, everybody involved, you know, all hands on deck. Everyone's doing a great job, and, and we're only getting better. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, round of applause to all OVC institutions for doing a great job. Keep it up. Let's keep it going. Moving on, we have baseball and softball. Quick news. First off, Tennessee Tech junior slugger A.J. Kirby Jones. This guy's a man. He's got 13 home runs in 23 games already. He's got 10 home runs in his last 10 games. That's a – he's – his home run average is .56 a game. That's second nationally. I mean, this man's doing work. He's got 39 RBIs already. And let's see, the, the OVC single season home run record is 26. And that was set in 2002 by Morehead State's Kerry Page. So, what's he got, 13 already? He's 13. There's a lot of baseball left, and this man's already halfway there. So, keep it up, doing work. I'd like to see it. Second note about baseball. The tickets for the baseball championship are going to go on sale on April 1st. You can go to the Tennessee West Tennessee Diamond Jacks box office to get those, or you can check out ovcsports.com, and we'll get you a link and get you hooked up with tickets as well. Now, it's going to be $10 a day, or you can do $30 for the entire session, which could be up to 11 games, depending on you know how it all shakes out. It's a double elimination, obviously, so... Could be a little more, could be a little less, but it's a great deal, and it's going to be in Jackson at the Pringles Park this year. It's a, it's a lot of fun. We've been down there already, kind of scouted this site. It's, it's gorgeous, and uh, we're looking forward to it, so you guys need to get, some, get your tickets for that, and we'll see you down there in May. Yeah, and I know that is an upgraded stadium from last season, so I'm definitely excited to see it and be there for that. And we're going to move to softball now. Um, UT Martin women are... You know, continuing to, continuing to have a great season, they are receiving votes for the fourth straight week in the USA Today NFCA poll, and they're receiving votes for the first time in the ESPN USA Softball Top 25. And they also have hit 34 home runs in 23 games so far, which is 10th in the nation. So, you know, like I said, they're having a great season. We're looking forward to more things to come. It's still very early. Okay. Now we got your players of the week. And a special note about the spring championships that will be taking place in the next few months. Championships are sure to be great competition and a great time. You got the weather starting to get nicer. It's going to be lovely. Ending today's show, we got a special treat for you. Neil Bradley of the Racer Sport Network on the call at the Murray State Vanderbilt game in San Jose last Thursday. So That's awesome. You're give it a listen. It. Enjoy it, and we'll see you guys later. Yeah. Lane slaps the ball. The call is play. He gets it to Miles. Miles takes it to Gennaro Thomas. Jumper for the win. Go!